Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Order. How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bus. It is gigantic. <laughs> what are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw would just happen to be wearing a cloak. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. Or a cloak like that could easily get snagged on the bust if they came into contact. Hey, idiot, who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Why me? Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance of this case, don't you agree? Duh, he caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? I still think my theory is that the cloak got snagged on, especially since they went and pointed that out. True, but we don't have gravity as a suspect. What if we choose Russell? And that's the closest we can get to it. That might work. The fool! H him? We're saying it was the victim himself, Russell Berry. That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself, placed the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. For fuck's sake, stand up straight. There you go. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. Alright. So you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Ooh. Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Wooden box then noises. Then he attached that rope to the bust. Bust and noises. The, and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. Gravity noises. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house by none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. Ugh. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bust hit the victim... Ow! Damn! Fluttering! You just wait a second right there, Mr. Phoenix, right? As much as you try. As much as your scheme. This just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Ms. Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. Eh? Now I ain't Canadian? <laughs> With the shock of impact, it threw up the cloak and it got snagged onto the bust. That's when the sound was heard by a witness and he took a look out of his window. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Mo Curls, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bus. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bus being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bus up. Question. Answer. So was Acro just not planning on... He was just planning on this being just an open and shut, no suspects thing, didn't he? Maybe. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. Now you know how the murder actually took place. And now you know who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the sea. Acro, it can only have been you. Now... You are the one. Why is he so calm? Now comes the question of motive. Well, we already know that. We just need to. Well, we don't it. really yet. I mean, let's. Uh, we have map. we have theories. It's he was not able to see out his window, so he would probably assume that it was Regina who showed up. He wanted to kill Regina.
for putting his brother into a coma because of the pepper on the scarf, causing, you know, the lion to do that to his brother. Echo's been playing mind games with all of us. And I look very high right now. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So. What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. Yes, I heard them. I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there was still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Use that and get out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. I want hard proof that you've unraveled the trick in this magic case. What would prove that? I got no idea. Would it be the note? Let me do the save real quick. Okay. So we need a contradiction from Moe's eyewitness account. Okay, what was Moe's eyewitness account necessarily? Like He, uh, he what... saw the silhouette standing above the body. And then it flew away. Whee! Like, what, like once he to up and told the truth. Yeah, that was it. Once he up and told the Thump, truth, looked, there it was, away it went. Uh, it's gonna be an item. Pretty damn sure. Yeah, definitely not a profile here. Eh, have we really used this poster for anything? We used it uh, against Mo to point out that he didn't see the roses. Ah, fair enough. <sighs> it might be that as a way of like saying, I don't know, no, no, ah, uh, shit. Contradiction. I'm confused. Okay, let's start ruling out what it can't be. It's not going to be the badge. Nope. Or the Magatama. Nope. I really, uh, I don't think the crime photo really has anything to do with it. There's not much left in this for us to look at. It's not going to be the crime photo, and I highly doubt it'll be the circus map. It's not going to be the, I really don't think it'll be the broken bottle. It's, nope. Forget, uh, it's not going to be this either. Nope. Might be the hat. Ooh, that's a good point. Because uh, that was at the crime scene. Uh, but what does, what would that prove necessarily? What would that contradict? Mo didn't see the hat? No, he saw him wearing the hat, but we've already explained, you know, the bust has a hat on Yeah, why didn't he see this hat on the ground? Because it was dark. It was under a light. Look, <clears throat> we're not... That, that's look, just my thing for now. We can keep going through. It needs to be... We need to find a contradiction in Mo's testimony that also proves what we've said. Yeah. Or at the very least, let's just focus on finding something that proves what we said. Like, it could be the note, even. I don't see how that contradicts anything Mo said. I don't think it's the lion or the monkey. Nor do I think it's the autopsy report. Is it the pepper? <sighs> no. It is not the pepper. I don't think it's going to be the photo, either. So, not the Grand Prix one, though. I really don't think it's going to be the wooden box. Eh. So it comes down to uh, playing the bus again, the note, the poster, and the hat. I think so, yeah. Save state. Alright, what shall we do first? I'll try this first, because the White Roses thing seems to make the most sense to me. Oh. Okay, okay. The problem is Max's three symbols. 
Good on you. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were upon them numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in most testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool, did you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the bust. Okay, that's my half of the thing. Yeah, maybe playing the silk hat would have done the same thing. Makes sense, if you look at it that way. Then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction. Remember what the ventriloquist said in court. He said that the witness white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there was no right rose blah blah white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course, I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak, sna cloak snagged onto the bust. In my hypothetical situation. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, <coughs> what happened to the white roses? They fell out? They were covered? Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Oh. Which explains why Mo didn't see it. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. True, he was going on about how he could see the face and he could see the back. Hmm. Order! This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this thing. Then maybe Mon Karma will finally throw in the towel. Uh uh uh. uh, uh tweet tweet uh. tweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is uh, it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motif. The witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to a circus is well aware of this. Mmm. Mmm, delicious burgers. Sorry, is something going on? Well, you know, the motor thing we talked about that would come up. <laughs> Thus, this is, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the Ringmaster. Mm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Akro's story. Learn about his relationship with the Ringmaster and his life up until now. But what do we do? There's no doubting that Akro deeply respected the Ringmaster. Akro's motive, hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well, however, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling. <laughs> Mr. Dingling's testimony after a recess. I need some swing time to think this over. This court will now take a ten minute recess. No one bother me. Get the fuck off my swing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, motive time. It's my birthday. Still. My birthday present, guilty verdict. <laughs> I can't believe it, Acro. It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is. I don't think he was always the most straightforward of the group. Jeebus, unbelievable. Ahem. Acro tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... he did? My, my. He's just a little twerp, isn't he? Well, that's one way to put it. 
<laughs> hey, hey, pal. If you're gonna ignore me after I went all this trouble to bring you some evidence. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. Ah, forget it. I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyway. Now, now, Detective. I'm sorry. Now, why don't you relax a little? We've got some really tasty milk. Huh. How, about, how about a card trick, Detective? Milk, you say? <laughs> well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned. What is it? There you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. The result of our investigation. You can look at it later. Won't Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? That's why this is all a secret. Huh? Look, details are on a need to know basis, and we're not in really allies or anything. But everything that's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. Excuse me? Oh. Oh. How would you read your goddamn mind? <laughs> but Karma looked like she was in a pretty big hurry, though. You'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday, our final plans were put into place. Final plans? Uh-huh. That reminds me. I've got a message from the prosecutor for you. Judgment comes at the very last instant. That's it. That's it for me too, pal. I'm going home. What did he mean by that? The very last instant part. Hmm. Everything he said seemed pretty cryptic to me. Oh, uh, one more thing. <laughs> ah! Don't scare me like that! Uh, it looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. Eh? For me? It's milk. Uh, the reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So, uh, hurry up and drink it before it spoils. An entire dairy's worth of milk? For me? Dibs. <laughs> I don't really know if he's, like, worried or not. Alright, we're back in courtroom poop. Yeah. Court is now in session. I am feeling much better after my swing time. Shall we continue with our proceedings? Miss Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akro's testimony, starting with his relationship with the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Akro would have to commit this crime. Understood. Now, Mr. Dingley. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Sorry. When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the ringmaster of the Berry Big Circus, Russell Berry, took us in. I became an acrobat at around nine years old. I wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. So I decided to give him a trophy. <laughs> hmm, you're such a thoughtful young man. As you heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could think that Akro could kill the man he's held in such high esteem. You are absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Which is why there's no real need for a cross-examination, is there? Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the Ringmaster? This might be my last chance to answer that question. I don't think there's a need to, to be honest. <sighs> Although, it's hard to, to turn down a cross-examination. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, though, because we think it's an accident. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to do a save state, but... I'll choose to cross-examine, but I don't know what we'll get from this. The defense has a right to cross-examine the witness. Hmm. You're so tactless for Phoenix Wright. You don't care about justice, do you? You just want to fabricate the motive. Very well, Mr. Wright. Cross-examine the witness. I'm gonna eat my sandwich. Back to pressing. We. Oh. <clears throat> yes, my brother Sean and I. 
What? You have a brother? How old were you when this happened, Akron? Yeah, I just realized, maybe we'll press something and it'll be like, Please amend your testimony, or something. Okay, that, that, that would probably be good. Yeah. I was eight years old, and my brother was four. Hmm. Your parents were very cruel, weren't they? Nowadays, we aren't bitter about what happened to us. Because it allowed us to meet the wonderful people at the very big circus. Nick, the judge is getting misty-eyed. I'm so sorry. He's got a I'm soft so spot for some stories, it looks like. <laughs> There's no crying in court. Let's keep going. Witness may proceed with his testimony. Come on, give me a kiss you. How would you describe your relationship with the ringmaster? He was like an uncle, a father, and a big brother, all rolled up into one. The ringmaster and my brother were the only family I had. Hmm, what about the other people at the circus? This was over 15 years ago. Back then, there were very few customers coming in. So no one really had the time to look after us. <sighs> Excuse me. Yeah, they were worried about other things. Yeah, but, th but this has been going on for almost, like, this is going on for about 7 hours, 20 minutes. It's like 1 a.m. for me and midnight for him, so... Finishing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. But the ringmaster... He would always come see us with a laugh and a smile. What a beautiful story. You don't give a shit. I like stories. Shut up. That's why I always was always thinking of what I could do to help. I wanted to thank him. Nick, isn't Akra such a wonderful person? I know. He seems like a nice guy, which is what makes this so difficult. Hmm. So then, how long have you been a performer? You started off as an acrobat at that early of an age? I begged the rigmaster until he finally agreed to let me do it. Ever since then, I've been in incredible physical shape. That also is when I decided to form a group with my brother. We called ourselves the Flying Dingling... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> to be fair... Oh my god! To be fair, Dingleberry. I know! That's <laughs> we, nasty! We... <laughs> <laughs> also, berries is spelled wrong. Well, yeah. Because it's a last name. I've even heard of them in Germany. Liar. The point is that I wanted to be of some use to the circus. You are a truly a remarkable young man. The judge keeps looking at Acro almost like a proud father. Did you ever have any trouble with the ringmaster? Ow! How could you ask such a thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have some sort of fundamental misunderstanding of this witness's testimony? Or the heartfelt emotions contained within? You'd better think about this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You'd better think hard. Ow! 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 Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's no way I could see this witness ever taking the victim's life. Exactly. I've been waiting for you to say that, Your Honor. Nick, I hate to say it, but uh, I agree with them. I was trying to chase down the truth, but I ended up just looking like a jerk. I think that will be enough for now. Pondering whether or not this witness will kill the Ringmaster leads me to... believe that it is pretty much unlikely. Exactly right, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Your Honor. What was Acro's motive for killing the Ringmaster? How about it? Can you explain that to me? Okay, I know what I would say here. I say but... I can't provide one. Hmm. Nick? Yeah, I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor, the reason that Acro killed the Ringmaster is something that can't be proven. Well, what? That's because Acro had no reason to kill the Ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool us fo like foolish fools is so foolishly... Okay, I actually messed up on that one. <coughs> Try it again. Try it again. Your foolish attempts to fool us like foolish fools is so foolhardily foolish. Did you forget? You made an accusation against this witness, did you not? 
I believe it was. This is the real killer of Russell Berry, Ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yes, that sounds about right. The end of things. Acro. You didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? The Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What did you just say? I'm saying that the target of this witness's murder plot was not the Ringmaster. He did not plan to kill Russell Barry. What? Why is it so damn cold over here? Who turned the air conditioning on again? <laughs> There's just like an air, like 50 air conditioners just around the prosecution area. <laughs> Order! It's to, try, it's to try to drown her out. Bailiff, I don't care who it is, smack anyone who's loud in the face. Twice if you must. Damn, judge ain't taking nothing. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to my court? Oh, Mr. Phoenix Wright! What in the world are you trying to do to this court? Are you trying to imply that Acro was trying to kill someone else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Regina, barely. This young girl is the ringmaster's daughter, correct? Acro, you were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? Objection! You don't need to answer that. It's a mean-spirited leading question. He could easily answer this question. If I'm wrong, all he has to do is say, you're wrong. That's it. That's it, huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough, Mr. Wright. Allow me to... Oh. The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. Okay, BAM! Huh? And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence, now! I want to know why Acro would want to kill Regina Barely. Yeah, yes, me too. I, I demand to see some proof. Ow, oh, my face. <laughs> present evidence that proof Acro was out to kill this young girl. Should I present Bat here? Is that what I would do here? Uh, what about the neckerchief? <sighs> that doesn't seem like the right thing at the moment. Well, what does it say in the description? Does it say given by Regina? Stained with his blood and a small quantity of pepper. Oh, okay. I think it would be best to play Bat. Okay. So here's, the th here's the thing. Here's the other options we have here. Like, in order to say what we want to say, our options are Leon, the Pepper, but that by this point we haven't actually reached that conclusion yet. Bear that in mind. The Scarf, same thing, and Bat. So it's just the Lion or Bat. But Probably I think Bat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Wright. At this point, the only thing that's important is evidence. Better not be a bluff. You're not going to... Oh! You're not going to fool me, Mr. Phoenix, right? Those two are finishing each other's sentences now. Really? That was wrong? Must, Must be the special, special bond, bond between Whipper and Whipped. My patience is running thin, Mr. Wright. Present evidence that provides a that proves Acro is out to kill this young girl. Maybe or save it... state before you choose the next thing? Maybe it's the note, I think, actually. And I save state before doing it in the first place. Okay. I think it would be this one, then. The note. Because I, I didn't even see the note at first. Yeah, I didn't think about it, but that's a good one. Okay, there we go. Acro, do you have any recollection of seeing this? That's... It's a piece of paper that we found inside the Ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim... Inside the victim's tailcoat. Acro wrote this note. It's ironically entitled, To the Murderer. Its purpose was to... Typo. Its purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. Rabble, rabble, rabble. So you're saying he called Russell Berry with that note? There's just one little problem. Problem? Acro did indeed place this note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean, it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other than Regina Barry. 